Okay, thanks again for staying with us on the show, TMI, for this beautiful Thursday morning. Okay, um, the party primaries is what is top of the agenda of all political parties because primarily there is a deadline to meet, and that's on the 3rd of June. And uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, INEC chairman through the uh, chairman of the Voter Education and Publicity Committee uh, came out to say, that's Festus Okoye, came out to say, look, there is no going back on the deadline for submission of uh, candidates list for the 2023 election. Just yesterday, the All Progressives Congress adjusted their timetable. Uh, that's what we ha that promise will be taking place, I think, at the end of this month. Okay, but we're just coming back home now to look at the preparations on the part of the ruling party in the state, the People's Democratic Party, uh, for the party primaries. In recent times, what has been at the front burner is the issue of uh, court ruling, court judgment, counter court ruling, counter court judgment. Just yesterday, we found ourselves in that scenario again. For the High Court in Benin, and then another one in Abuja, giving judgment. Uh, sometimes conflicting, though. But uh, I have a panelist already with me in the studio, the Honorable Commissioner for Information at the State, Barrister Andrew Adaze Evanta. Thank you for joining us on the program. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good morning, and good morning to our viewers at home. And I also have joining us via Zoom is Bob Manuel. Umoru. Bob Mara, thank you for joining us on the program this beautiful Thursday morning. Good morning, sir, and thank you for having me. Okay, first, let's uh, establish why this pattern has been on. Uh, it looks like there is no end in sight, but maybe we can say just now, on account of what transpired in the court yesterday, the end has come. But let's look at that as, as it is, uh, beginning with uh, Barista Vanta. What is the status of the ad hoc delegates that were elected just a few days back? Uh, the likes of uh, Barrister Kenneth Imaswagmo, the rice man, won overwhelmingly in Eastern South East with over 150 something votes. And then a few days later, we started hearing that uh, him and several others didn't make the delegate list to Abuja. Meanwhile, the, 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 the ad hoc delegates uh, election was conducted by the party and representatives were sent from the national headquarters of the party to Benin to conduct that um, election. And then there was uh, a window of appeal. The appeals committee sat for days with no one coming forward to either reject the outcome of that uh, delegate election or otherwise. But the news started filtering that those who came from that delegate election didn't make the list to Abuja. So what is the situation? Let me begin with you, Barista Ivanta. Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, in every political contest, we always have issues of those that will have conflicting views, as it were. And at the end of the day, what I think matters in a democratic society is when, when matters go to court okay. and the matter is finally resolved. You mentioned yesterday's judgment. It is the final judgment of a court of competent jurisdiction. Okay. And as such, the issue of both the ad hoc and the national delegate was resolved with finality in that yesterday's judgment. Okay. There was party there was party congresses, I mean within the meaning of section eighty four sub five C of the Electoral Act that makes it mandatory for political parties to organize special congresses for the purpose of electing delegates, and normally these delegates are ad hoc in nature, like the statutory delegates, which of course are party officials, okay. as we have them in the various uh, party constitutions, okay. of which that of the PDP is not an exception. So to that extent, we know that on the day designated for the ad hoc three-man ad hoc delegate congress in Edo State, which of course was 30th of April, some individuals, a panel was set up by the political party's leadership in Abuja yeah. to come and conduct this special congress. They came to Benin. Of course, you know, they cannot be everywhere. 
they had an arrangement, an elaborate arrangement to have this Congress hold in the 192 words. Mm. And it actually held in the 192 words. Like okay. in my word, uh, in Igor, what seven in Igor, we had that Congress and we elected three persons. Okay. And by the time we got the results of those three persons, we took it to the local government party secretariat. From there, they forwarded it to the state coalition center. Mm. And of course, by the time this entire process was over, the list was compiled by those who came to conduct this conference and forwarded to Abuja. We are aware, like in our own local government, some persons went to hold their own, you know, elsewhere. Okay. We heard that they went to this uh, army secondary school at SRT Dusilu and were pursued away. They actually conducted theirs on the road. Mm. I mean, very shameful, okay. on the road, okay. as against where was designated for that purpose. So for me, the issue of the national delegate was also resolved in this judgment, judgment. because the court said, these were the individuals as elected ad hoc delegates that were supposed to be part of the national delegates election that took place. Okay. And for the ad hoc, sorry, for the national delegate election, we had a, a similar um, group of persons who came from Abuja. But the same thing that played out in the Terry Man ad hoc also played out. These same persons, like in Igor, went to conduct theirs on another main road mm. as against the designated party secretariat. Okay. We were all there at the party, or rather, at uh, there was this mobile barrack we used for that purpose. It okay. was during the other one that we went to the party, party secretariat. secretariat. But we agreed on the venue and we were there. And it's quite unfortunate when you hear people talk of INEC. The role of INEC here is just for the purpose of informing them that these are the newly elected ad hoc delegates of our party or the national delegates. Okay. INEC has a very insignificant role. Mm. It is only when you have party primaries that INEC will come to supervise, not an internal matter of this kind. So this is an Section, intra, intra, -party intra party matter. Mm. You decide your returning officer, you decide everything. The most important thing is to inform INEC. When you receive members into your party, it is not the business, business of INEC. Because unlike indirect primaries, mm. indirect primaries is normally an internal affair yeah. of the party. Yeah. They decide those that will vote, not INEC. So what the other side did was to take a list of the persons they purportedly selected to INEC, submitted it to INEC, and when the time came for this list to be published, to deceive the people to who drink the general public, yeah. they demanded for that document from INEC, asking INEC to certify it. Mm. I'll give you an example. If I submit a document to the High Court, right, mm. it becomes a public document. Okay. The moment I'm asking for it, I can ask them to certify it. Okay. The mere fact that the stamp of INEC is on the document does not make it something that meets the requirements of the law. Okay. The most important thing is who came to conduct these congresses. It was the party's leadership that sent some persons to conduct these you know, congresses. Those who were elected under that, through that process, as was held by the court, were the ones that were validly elected. Anything short of that? All right, I, I, before I bring uh, uh, Bob Mano Omoro on board, um, if these processes were duly followed, so how come we started hearing days later that these names of uh, people that emerged from these processes didn't make the final list to Abuja? Talking of Abuja, yeah. I'm happy that the court has resolved this issue. PDP was the first defendant in the judgment that was delivered yesterday. The party chairman, Azibimi, was the second defendant. And of course, they said the Congress that took place was actually conducted by the emu led Tilliman Committee, right? Yeah. And the party did not question the process. The party could not have questioned the process that it orchestrated or it you know, um, uh, approved. And at the end of the day, the result of this particular Congress was forwarded to Abuja. Okay. The party w were the ones that instructed their lawyers as defendants in that case. Okay. And at the end of the day, the court has finally settled this matter. Okay. Though these individuals mm. made efforts, I mean, yeah. the other persons who say they did their Congress mm. and all of that, mm. that went to INEC, yeah. quote and unquote, yeah. the INEC delegates, quote and unquote, yeah. they sent a lawyer to disrupt proceedings. And the question that was asked by the judges, are you a party to this suit? Mm. They said no, that they are PDP lawyers. Okay. But whereas the PDP lawyer that was in court had a letter authorizing him from the national headquarters to represent the party. And the next thing that they were now trying to put up was that 
they wrote a petition against the judge. That's a different ball game. Okay. It's the same way on the pages of newspaper, they have been saying all kinds of things. But the truth is, the governor, as leader of the party, believes that the umbrella is big enough and he has been meeting consistently with the various party aspirants. And most of the aspirants have concluded that they accept the governor's leadership and as such, come Saturday, they are all going to participate in the process. And whoever emerges will come together as one family and face the APC in the general election. That is what is most important. Okay, it's not the APC. Is internal, you, you face other candidates, it's not the APC. Because the APC <laughs> being the major political party, okay. being the major political party, yeah. will definitely give them a run for their money. Because right. in the last House of Assembly elections yes. we had in 2019, yeah. remember, we had a one-off election because we didn't have governorship. Okay. And it was on the strength of the performance of this present governor that Edo people voted 24 members of the APC as against zero members of the PDP. Because PDP has been out from government for 12 good years. So okay. I don't think at this time all these uh, crises Rumbling, here and there yeah. is necessary. All right. You now have a PDP government yeah. because some of these persons are used to opposition politics. And that is what right. they are Let me pursue you there, Mr. Let me pursue there. You know? there. Let me pursue there. Um, I, I'm very happy that um, Bob Manuel Moro can actually link up with us to engage this discussion. You've been following this, um, what's been coming out from the Honorable Commissioner. L let's get your perspectives on where we are now with the judgment and perhaps give us uh, your insights into where we are coming from a bit of it and then where we are right now and where we are going. Uh, in the bid up to the 2023 election, particularly for the party primaries, that is supposed to take place on Saturday. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, let me quickly um, enlighten the uh, Honorable Commissioner with the view of educating him on uh, certain principles that have to do with his field that he needs to understand. I've always been telling people it's not about having billions of books in your library. The question is, do you read them? Do you digest these books? Uh, I want to correct him to let him understand that anything that has to do with election and electoral processes, as far as the nation is concerned, it is the sole responsibility of INEC to determine and to monitor every process until after the election. So where he's quoting, uh, INEC does not have this or that, is something you have to push to the dustbin of irrelevance. As far as the 2023 uh, processes is concerned, you cannot throw up INEC, including from the delegate conference, uh, congresses down to the major uh, election. Now to the issue we have on ground, the, the question is, did the party fix a date for the congresses, the ad hoc congresses? The answer is yes. Was the date, the very day across the nation that the Congresses were conducted? The answer is yes. The question is, across the nation, was INEC there to monitor or to stand as witnesses to the fact that the party followed the process? Across the nation, the answer is yes. The question then again is, were three ad hoc delegates uh, elected across the world in a those states and other parts of the nation. Same day, the answer is yes. Were they duly submitted then to the party? The answer is yes. Now, this is what uh, the bitter pills that uh, Barrister Enwata and their team have refused to swallow. But how be it, whether they like it or not, that ship has sailed. The adult delegate for 192 words have been submitted and the names have been accepted and endorsed by the party. Not just INEC. INEC submitted what they witnessed. And it was stamped. And what INEC have in their file is not different from what the party is having in their file. Now, the issue is that uh, we fix Saturday for Congresses. You are holding Congresses on Sunday. It shows that it's a parallel Congress. It is not recognized. And then the, you know the, the whole of the story. But uh, two people are not aliens to these stories. The, the main issue now, what they are jumping out dancing like children that uh, have not eaten biscuits for over two months. It's just one kangaroo court order that they got. A kangaroo court order. And who was the lawyer they sent to court? You know, uh, when, when, when you say, just, just a moment, uh, just just a moment, uh, uh, Bob Manuel. Um, the the Edo State High Court gave that judgment. And I've also been told that there was uh, another uh, court judgment from the Federal High Court 
in, in Abuja. These are not kangaroo courts. So let's be very civil with our languages. The point I want to ask you is that, what is your take on the judgment delivered by the High Court on the status of these delegates that were elected and then uh, presented? And somewhere along the line, uh, the list that came from Abuja, their names were not there. Are you saying that these people were not elected, uh, Bob Manuel? Whatever transpired in the courts yesterday, for us and for the process of the law, as far as 2023 is concerned, does not hold water. The NJC gave a direct order to all its members that any issue that has to do with electionary process, as far as 2023 is concerned, should be directed to the Federal High Court Abuja. Only the Federal High Court has the jurisdiction to entertain their demand. But how be it, their legal team are weak in that direction to understand the tenets of the law and the tenets of the electionary process. It's even painful to note that uh, the Honorable Commissioner is a lawyer and he cannot even understand... No, no I, don't, I don't want us to make this uh, personal, but man, just hold on. Uh, focus okay. on the issues, yeah. not... Yeah. I don't want yeah. you to... Yeah. Hold on, just hold on, just hold on. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, but man, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you are very emotional about this, but I want us to focus on the issues, not the personalities. Okay? No, no, no. Yeah, try and focus on the issues, I'm yes. I'm not focusing on the personalities. Yeah, that's what then you are trying to do. Focus on the issues, yeah. On the issue of the case going to uh, be in the court that there was a judgment. Yes. It's a water judgment because it will not stand. There is a directive that hmm. only the federal high court, Abuja, both of them are court of appellate jurisdiction. Hmm. But on this matter, who has the sole responsibility to determine who is who in this electionary process? It's the Federal High Court Abuja. And the Federal High Court Abuja have okay two ad hoc, uh, two, uh, the national delegate list and the ad hoc delegate uh, list. So as far as this matter is concerned, you see, uh, what I feel is happening is that uh, some persons just want to give hope to people where there is no hope, especially to their teaming uh follow up okay all right let, let, let me let me uh, pursue, let me pursue that i'll come back to you in a moment um yeah but man just pause for a moment i'll come back to you in a moment um i've heard you use the word those on the other side repeatedly in your you know opening uh, statement I, I thought at some point um there was intervention by the national chairman of the party and then some individuals highly placed individuals with the party within the party were called into it to intervene and then resolve all of the lingering issues. I thought we had gone past that stage. Why is this issue of the other side, them, their team, uh, the other people? I mean, um, like we're having opposition within a ruling party, that kind of scenario. Why is this still persisting? Yeah, I think before I continue, yes. I, I'm not. Uh, just an individual, I represent the face of the district government. Absolutely. And uh, it's only educated people that understand this fact. And that's why I will not, at any level, be pedestrian okay. in my communication. Okay. And uh, as such, it's good we put issues in their proper place. Yeah. You know, the fellow on the other side is not a lawyer. I'm not just a lawyer. I'm a constitutional lawyer. I teach law. Okay. So when you hear him talk of the provisions of the law, which I just mentioned, Section 84, Sub 5 of the Electoral Act. Yeah. You know, it's not something that a layman can understand. It's written in black and white. Yeah. It states clearly the procedure of a special congress. At the tail end, INEC is informed. That's what the new electoral act says. Except it's referring to the electoral act during the time of the Second Republic or the Third <laughs> Republic, right? So I don't want to engage somebody who is not learned okay. to that extent. Okay. Only that, that's that's why we're here, so that we can educate ourselves. So yeah, I, just yeah. I just told you, that is what the law says. Okay. I didn't say it. It's okay. what the new electoral act says. Okay. Right? Yeah. And as such, as I mentioned earlier, INEC will be there on Saturday to supervise these primaries on the strength of these judgments. Does it look like a kangaroo judgment? This is a judgment that is final for all purpose and for all seasons. So anybody calling it a kangaroo judgment shows the level of his education. The court gave a judgment. You refer to the fact that there's a policy document. He's not a lawyer. And I will explain what that policy document represents. We've had cases where you have a matter in Benin. Some persons, because of their own political convenience, decide to go to Abuja. Yeah. They find it luxurious to talk of federal high courts. Who are the parties in this case? 
the PDP as first defendant, as a Gbomi, the state chairman of those states, right? As second defendant. Elected ad hoc delegates were the ones that went to court. So where does the Federal High Court come in here? But because they are so used to this INEC phraseology, don't we have a Federal High Court in Benin? Why Abuja? The policy document says if you have a suit whose cause of action is within Benin, why go to Abuja? And that is what they are trying to correct. The Federal High Court naturally has limited jurisdiction, but the High Court of the state has unlimited jurisdiction. Okay. Coming back to the issue of what the NDC said, the NDC said you cannot have a matter in a particular state, then you run to Abuja. Yeah. It is because of this practice of trying to induce the judiciary to do certain things that you leave a federal high court in Benin and go to Abuja. So what is so special about going to Abuja? That is not what the court, or rather the NDC said, as it's trying to portray, that all election matters, it is not correct. The electoral act is very clear on the courts with jurisdiction. Both the state high courts, and the federal high court have the jurisdiction as far as party primaries are concerned. Mm. And this is one of the processes that dovetails into the party primaries. Okay. Because without the delegates in an indirect you know, system, yeah. you cannot talk of primaries. Yeah. It is not all the members that yeah. are entitled to vote. Yeah. So if these judgments have said that these are the validly elected delegates, and they are saying they are not going to, of course, they cannot appeal because the party is satisfied with these judgments. Yeah. The state chairman is satisfied with this judgment. On Saturday, we'll meet ourselves in the field. You ask the question. I said the people on the other side. Mm -hmm. You saw the way he was speaking. They looked very aggrieved. They have been, in gov <laughs> they have been out of government for 12 years. They prefer to be in a position because the idea is that because PDP didn't have a state governor, they were now in a position to negotiate this delegate thing. It's actually a business. It's, delegate, it's called delegate trading. You say I have X number of delegates, I need X, um, X number of monies, or uh, X number of delegates, X amount of money, and you get it. And you, so this business is no more. You now have a PDP governor who is the leader of the party. Do you expect this program to be aggrieved? And I think that's where we are. All right. Um, but but Mara, um, I, I, I'm deeply concerned by the fact that um, this, this issue has been raging, and um, at some point, we got this feeling that the issue has been resolved. Everybody has come together. It is now the big umbrella that can accommodate every one of you. But as, as it is today, it looks like the differences, the gulf, is even widening by the day, even leading to the primaries that is scheduled for Saturday. What's your take on this, Bob Manuel? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, you know, the issues in the party are simple. The governor said he wants the structure of the party. And we didn't elect him for the structure of the party. We elected him to serve the people of Edo State. This the 192 local gov uh, uh, wards in the 18 local government of Edo State. And there were campaign promises made. These were the focus. You said two things made up a political party, the government and the party. That's the, that the structure of the party. The structure of the party maintains the activities of the party, the internal administration, while the government runs with the ideals of the party to deliver the promises of the campaign. Now, Mr. Governor said he wants the, the, the structure of the party. The question is, what does he want the structure for? Attempts have been made. They reported the issue to the national chairman. The national chairman came down solely because of this issue, not because he wanted to come and inaugurate anything or, or whatever commission was solely for this issue. And he told them clearly his mind on the matter. It was not okay with them. They went further to begin to bring up cases upon cases. You will help me ask about the water. In all the cases they've taken to court, which of them have been triumphing? If not for this one that they are celebrating, and you have to understand why did some person have to kick out last night? Because they got a judgment that will not even start the test of time in the whole of this uh, of this process. So it's not even about the party you know, saying they want crisis or anything. It is they, you know you have said it, that he said the other side, the other side, the other side. The other side is those who declined to PDP. The problem they caused in APC, they migrated with that same problem. They refused to purge themselves of those bitterness and felt that structure grabbing is the purpose why they are in governance. And the purpose of governance of PDP is to serve the people. Anything short of that will not work. I want to lay down his fears and I want to put, prepare his mind ahead of Saturday. The Congresses 
have been done with, the delegates have been gotten. So Saturday primary is going to hold, and only one thing will happen. The delegates, as recognized by the party and as recognized by INEC, the three ad hoc delegates of the 192 uh, wards, and the national delegates and the statutory delegates, those that we know, are the ones that are going to vote. So if any of them have anything to say, they should go and queue and begin to uh, begin to discuss, begin to interface with the delegates, tell the delegates what you want to do. I don't believe that that list you are coming with will come and stand in PDP. I want them to understand one thing. You know, when people begin to do loyalty, begin to do loyalty, begin to fight party, begin to say you are fighting everybody, you have to understand that every government has its own timeline. It's on the spiral date. Obasaki's administration... All right, uh, but man, let, let me just, let me just, let me just uh, interrupt you there. But man, just hold on, hold on. Hold on for a second. Let me, let me interrupt you there. Um, are you saying that um, a panel was not sent from Abuja to conduct this exercise in the PDP in Edo State? And if a panel, was, panel, indeed, if a panel was indeed sent to do that, yes. the outcome of those exercises, what becomes of them? Thank you, sir. A panel was sent from Abuja. The hmm. panel did their job the very day the Congress was set for, and they left. And then they organized a concocted uh, arrangement from the from the pit of the structure to come and organize a Congress for them on Sunday. And the people were not from Abuja. They were from pit. Tell them to boldly publish the list of those that came from Abuja. And let us publish the list of those that came from Abuja from our side. And of course, the island uh, personnel that were on ground. Why is it paining them so much? INEC was not on ground. INEC told them they would not uh, they would not support any illegality that the party communicated Saturday to them. And they were on ground for Saturday. So who was on ground with them? So it it, it, it behoves Barita Ewata to enlighten his own people as the angle of the law. And if he doesn't have the requisite knowledge according to the Electoral Act, he should seek bigger uh, heads of uh, those above above him in the field to come and enlighten the people. It's coming to grandstand and think you can use political office or the power of the governor to, uh, to do anything in PDP. PDP is an organized institution that has passed through fire, through water, through rocks, and through any weather. And today, is it the strongest party as far as Africa is concerned? This particular case is just a child's play. It's already neat in the board. It's off the table already. Okay. Saturday uh, primaries is going to hold. And the delegates that we elected are the ones we go to that ground and elect. Okay. And I want to assure you, I want to assure you this, sir. Yeah. Take note of all the processes. Every candidate that will be submitted, that will face the general election, are those that we have elected. Anything short of this, I tell you that in 2023, uh, God University will be out of power. But tell me, let them tell it now. All right. All right, um, 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 but man, let me just uh, let me let me let me pause let me pause there for a moment. Hold on, hold on, just hold on, hold on. Can you hold on? Can you hold on? Just just be calm. I know you're a very passionate, emotional person on some of this, but just be calm and let's take it one at a time. Let, let me come back to you to um, look at this issue of a seeming uh, intractable differences that has engulfed the party as far as I can remember, and it looks like the end is not in sight. Just now, we are, the party is on the verge of uh, an election, uh, particularly the primary. This matter is still raging. Why is it so difficult to resolve this matter uh, in, the, in the words of finality? But you said a while ago that this court judgment has put paid to whatever differences. Yeah, would you want to expatiate on that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I will want to say that we talk of Saturday as if it is forever. It's mm. just this Saturday. This Saturday. And, uh, you know, we have what we call a democratic culture now in Nigeria. Mm. When a judgment gives, or like court gives a judgment, you obey the judgment. As right? it stands. As it stands. Yeah. You obey the judgment. It is a reality. You don't need to agree with it. But that's a reality. That's in a the reality. face of the law. Even if you don't admire it. But at some point, after the election, after the Congresses, or rather the primaries of this Saturday, which is for the House of Assembly, Sunday for the House of Reps, Monday for the Senate, they will now come back and, ref and read this judgment, which they are refusing to accept as what will guide the conduct of Saturday's election. Because when you look at uh, the way these people have been carrying on, you ask the reason why it's difficult to come 
to some level of compromise or mm. consensus. I, I told you, it's a business. For them, it's a delegate market. It's a delegate trading that has gone for 12 years when they were in the opposition, right? If you notice, there's a Pakla governor that is interested in Edo, not because he likes the size or the faces of these persons, for delegates, right? The person on the other side, does it look like who can fund a serious litigation? Or they have financiers. It's a business. So no matter how beautiful the offers are in government, when this government appointed senior special assistants, both the old and the new, though we are now one, got almost equal slots. You have people who were once old PDP members like Chris Nehari, who is now my colleague in ESCO, is a commissioner for youth and humanitarian affairs. You have many of them in Day Henry. I can go on and on. The special advisor for the same local government with Chris Nehari, an old PDP member, is a special advisor to the government police called Lego South. So these are people who are willing. But for those who have been in this business of delegate training, even if you make them the chief judge of a do state, <laughs> or you make them the chief of staff, it cannot satisfy their urge in this. It's like a business. It is a business, actually. So no matter how you present government to them, they prefer to stay in the opposition. Why can a party member, you know, honestly say his own governor will leave in 2020 when the terminal date of the governor's term is 2024. When the governor was elected September 19, 2020, was it not for a four-year term? Their plan is to concoct this whole process, have PDP in crisis, so that the APC can reap from it. And that's why he's imagining, I mean, in his wildest dream that the governor will leave in 2023. It cannot happen. A real party man, a honest party man, who is not inflicted by insanity, will not pray for his party to leave government. And I think he has justified me that they prefer to be in opposition. It is so because Edo politics has always been like that. You always have the good, the bad, and the ugly. You have those that, I mean, the reason why we come into politics, it is not to get power, it is not to be in government, but there are some people, because of a pattern they have enjoyed for 12 years, of trading with the party, in the name of the party, you don't expect them with a governor, a PDP governor, to be comfortable with that arrangement. They are not used to political appointments. They don't believe in political appointments. They believe in contracts. They believe that the PDP government elsewhere can give them contracts, and they stay out of government. And when it comes to the time of election, they now promise to give them delegates. And that is what is happening. And unfortunately, you find that, as it stands, they cannot accept this reality. And it is their condition. It is not the condition of what will happen on Saturday. Right. Because on Saturday, yeah. On the strength of what has happened, yeah. it is the legally and validly approved delegates from yesterday's judgment that will be allowed into the venue. Because they want to be chaotic, you can take a bet. They have two options. Either to buy courts, because they will not be allowed to do anything illegal as far as the law is concerned. The PDP has a known authority. Anybody that violates the law, the person talking on the other side, I've never seen him physically. I was expecting that a human being would come here. He insults everybody using the social media. I expect that on the day of the election, I don't know if he's a delegate, but if he's a delegate, he should come. The outcome will be there. You will invite us again. The entire process will terminate on Monday. Monday is not forever. Absolutely. And we will talk about so it. So we'll review the, the primary. We'll, we'll review it. Okay, now there's something I want to... I, I know uh, Umoro is, uh, is itching to say something, but there's something I want need to quickly uh, respond to. Were there two panels sent from Abuja to preside over this exercise? It is a single panel, right? If, for instance, there was another panel, it would have been said by the party that this was a real party. The, 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 the party was a, 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 I mean, the PDP is the first claimant in this, okay. sorry, the first defendant in this case. Okay. The party chairman is the second defendant in this case. Okay. They all testified, witnesses were called. Okay. And it was on the strength of the evidence that the court now resolved that those who were elected from the process yeah. that occurred in a do state across the 192 wards from the able led committee were the ones that were validly elected okay. and the party of the pdp has been perpetually restrained from accepting any other ad hoc delegates list 
outside the claimants. Okay. So that if that is the position of the law, yeah. anything short of that, of course, is So why, why, why was the exercise moved from Saturday to Sunday? What he's saying is just a figment of his imagination. It took place on Saturday, right? And I think the argument they are trying to put up is that they saw video clips on Sunday. You are a media person. <laughs> it's not possible the process that ended in the evening for yeah. it to come out. That's so when they saw the videos on, on Sunday. Sunday, they now concluded that... Right, but, 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 let, let, me get you, let me get you in here. Are you aware of any AMU-led panel sent from the national headquarters of the PDP to conduct this exercise in Edo State? Are you aware? <laughs> I am not aware of that. Uh, <laughs> so so the, the panel that conducted the primaries uh, or the what exercise. Point? Yeah, what's the name? The name. What's the, what's the name of the leader of the panel? Or, of the, or that conduct? I mean, are you saying that you, you admitted to the fact that uh, the national leadership of the party sent a panel to conduct the exercise? Who led that panel on your side? Uh, oh, definitely, I am not with the list yet. And uh, you expect. You don't, you don't, know, you don't have the list with you. You don't know the names of the people. Not with me here. Okay, all right. I don't have their names on my head. I have many names like keep on my head. I'll keep the name on my head. Keep okay. the name on my head. Okay. I know the list. I have it in my archive, and I can produce it any day, any time. Okay. The okay. question I have asked him, he has yeah. refused to address that question. No, no, I'm not asking, asking the questions here. But man, yes, I'm not asking the questions okay, here. Okay, I will yeah. direct the question to you now. Yeah. You can direct the question to him, sir. Okay. Saturday was set for the congresses mm. across the state. The congress is here. What happened on Sunday? Hmm. What happened? See, when you say illegality is illegality, it means that those that have the strong affinity for illegality, no matter how you polish them, they will stay on the fence with illegality. They will stay inside that compound and live for as long. Uh, he has opined that uh, we are out of business, delegates, X, Y, Z. Jackie Rose said, the business of business is business. The business of PDP is to provide credible governance for the people, to ameliorate the pains of the people and give them a vibrant and buoyant economy that will change the status of their life. And that is what PDP has been doing across the board. If today, with all we have done, all they think they can do is to come and malign us, to come and give us all sort of name, they should take back their mind to 2020 when they were crying on the streets like children and we gave them the widest umbrella and we mocked up their faces. We have not lost that big brother's heart. Of, uh, of giving succor to those who would need it. We have played that role as designed by God, and we have moved on as a party to face the issue of governance. If the party was weak as they claim, we have two city senators, and we have four House of Press members, all doing well with good results. And as of today, we are bold to say that we are going to another process again that has been claimed and satisfied by all umpires, including that of the party, and we are going to fix it squarely. The only thing I want to tell uh, Barrister Enwata is this. If you leave the table of brotherhood and think you can cast fire on it, what I have said is this. We are going to ensure that we stop with all our power and might the Zamfara issue that they want to lead us to. We are not going to that point, but if they are bent on going the illegal way, they should be aware that there is a precedent in court, and the court will always sit up again to say that this is the right thing that should be done. They should not forget Zamfara and other environment. And I want to say this clearly to him and to every other person that are listening. The court, the high court in Edo State, is a court of appellate jurisdiction, no doubt. But on this matter, that same court lacks jurisdiction. You have said I should not uh, cast certain as passion. Yes. There are certain vital information that if I let out today on this seat, heads we roll. Everything that transpired in that court is on our palms. We have all the records. But congratulations to them. We've not tied. Your sorrow has just begun because whatever you think the God gave to you yesterday is a child's play. You have not gone to the market to buy biscuits. It's just a biscuit uh, uh, marketing that you have gone out to. I want to state it clearly and I want Barista Enwata to meet 
it with senior lawyers who are senior advocates of Nigeria. All right. Um, 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 but, but Bano, I, 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 I know I, I remember yeah. that I did warn you a while ago yeah. that. No, we, no just, a moment, just, just, just a moment. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment, by Stavata. I remember I said it a while ago that let's be try, let's try and control our emotions and be civil in our language. Let's not go personal. We'll make it rowdy and then the conversation will become meaningless. The essence of the conversation is to help to educate and enlighten members of the public on what is the state of affairs with the delegates, uh, whether ad hoc delegates or statutory delegates as the case may be. Uh, I've asked you some very specific questions. I'm hoping that maybe when we have a review of this conversation, you'll be able to provide those answers. That's just the way it is for now. But um, let me ask you this question. Currently, the party in power in Edo State is the PDP. But yes. interestingly, the greatest opposition to the party in power is still the PDP. Does this make sense to you at all? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you ask if it makes sense to me. Does it, does it make sense I, to you? Yeah. I'm asking. As a person, as yeah. a person yeah. if you look at the position of justice, it makes sense. If you look at party politics, you say it doesn't make sense. It makes sense in the position of justice because when you elect somebody, if I elect you to be the governor of the party now, I as the party elect you to be the governor of those states, there are hopes and aspirations that we have uh, come together to agree that we should meet, meet our campaign promises. And any deviation from that campaign promises, the people will not just hold uh, the governor to accountability because they might not even do that, looking at the power that is going to, the instrumentality of power that is going to use against them. They will want to hold the party in, 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 uh, in, in uh, the party in power. Yeah. They want to hold them to that because it was the party that campaigned. Don't forget, individuals don't campaign. It okay. is the party that campaigned. Okay. The party campaigned for that position and told the people, if you give us your mandate, mm. we'll do X, Y, Z. So are you, are so you, then, say, are you saying now that, that in, in line with the promises made, the PDP uh, government in Andas and Edo State, under the leadership of uh, Governor Gordon Abasaki, has not lived up to the expectations of the visa. What you're saying, just in one word. I am not saying it has not lived up to. I am saying it shed woefully in living up to that expectation. Okay, so I'll post, I'll I'll post you there now. I'll post, post you there. I'll no post no, no, no schools, right. no teachers in the school. Salaries of uh, university lecturers are not being paid. Universities are shut down, and among other, there are state universities that even when our students strike, they, they are working. Okay. Let, let me let me post let me post it there now, Bob Manuel. Let me let me get you to the yeah. Just just hold on, Bob Manuel. Hold on, just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just hold on. Uh, let me let me get you, let me get you to respond to this. Yeah, in terms of fulfilling the aspirations or meeting the aspirations of other people. It, it was because of performance, right, that the governor from APC got into the PDP and defeated his PDP opponents who now moved to the APC in 2022, 2020, in the September 19th governorship election. Yes. That should tell you the appreciation of Edo people for some of those legacy projects, namely the Ushima power plant. Government is a process. What the governor has laid now as a foundation, if people before him laid more foundation like Ogumudia, remember those civil service buildings on Sapley Road that were abandoned for over 40 years? We've had a series of governors come and go. But it was only Gordon Obasaki that has been able to revolutionize our public buildings. And I know you agree with me that what we now call a no public com civil service is not what it used to be. We now have a professionalized civil service that is well motivated. It is only in a civil servants don't wear black. In rivers, they wear black. They protest. The petitioners protest. On the first of May, which was Workers' Day, the governor against the national minimum wage has now approved a new minimum wage of 40,000 naira for the workers. He has been able to harmonize pensions. We don't have a state government that has refused to pay pensions, but rather from politicians in Edo State as against what is a social contract with his people. But this one government that has shown fidelity, is it night life in Edo which has resumed? The key index you look in development is security. Because section 14 sub 2 of the 1999 Constitution says the security and welfare of people of the people is the primary purpose of government. You ask about welfare. Are those people faring better under the PTP government of Edo State? The answer is yes. Is Benin City secured? The answer is yes. 
Just recently, the government has been able to put up a new security architecture. Before now, you know it was difficult to move at night in Benin City, especially the post NSAS situation. But now people move freely. You look at the industrial sector, you see a whole lot of shopping malls springing up across the length and breadth of Benin City and even beyond. You know, the Benin City Mall will come up very soon. In the area of housing, we are having various housing nurses spring up in Amagba, over here and the rest. Why? Because of the new infrastructure government is putting up. We have a plan and project. Is it sports? Recently we hosted the sports festival. Is it our culture and our tourism you know, areas? The governor has brought new development across this length and breadth of the state. Is it infrastructure? Is it the way we are tackling the issue of flooding? So for me, only a party member that is loyal we admit this. In the next 24 hours, the governor will be giving the Vanguard Governor of the Year Award in appreciation of what he has been doing across the various sectors. And that is one social contract the governor has with the Edo people of making Edo great again. In sports, is it our healthcare sector? Just recently, we hosted the Association of Nigerian Professionals from the Americas that performed over 300 surgeries for indigent Edo people. They took care of about 4,000 Edo people across the 18 local governments. These people came because they appreciate what we are doing. And of course, the Edo state government has now institutionalized this. It becomes a yearly thing. How best or how more can you take care of the people? He made two statements which are quickly correct. First, he referred to the Edo state high court as an appellate court. You know, it is when you have ignorance you can make that kind of mistake. But because at times, out of envy and malice, they do certain things, they leave reality. And two, he said that he cannot tell you the name of the person that came to conduct their Congress. Is that not self-deception? It is self-deception. Because if it is something you know, you will not come on ITV, which is a national TV, to who drink, deceive, and lie to other people. It is the Edo-led committee that conducted that Congress. And I've mentioned that name more than five times in this program. We cannot mention the name of the person who he claimed conducted that so-called ad hoc delegate election. The truth does not have version. It's only falsehood that has version. In fact, this same man, 10 times, he cannot produce. Because what you have, you have. In law, we say, you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you don't have. Okay. All right, let, let's quickly call it a wrap. Um, but, Mara, I'd like to get your final thoughts on uh, the primaries on Saturday. Uh, what are your expectations? Uh, I think it will be unfair for you to just hear from me on the primaries. Be because uh, because you, started, you started there, and I had to get the Honorable Commissioner uh, to you respond. Gave, you, gave him, you gave him time to deceive the people. <laughs> I also gave see. you time when to speak, to speak on it. Yeah. Mm. Maybe if I say this, you could cut me off. Okay. Why well, you did not uh, tell the people the state of the medical centers in those state? What is happening to Stella Albastanjo? What is happening to a uh, specialist hospital? A governor that closes down a library to set up a, 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 a supermarket, you will tell me it's a proactive governor. Beneath today, beneath today, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sonny, look, I want you to be sincere with yourself. When the rain falls in two hours, can you tread around your street with your legs not driving? Flood has taken over Benin. We are talking about security. That's how the governor set up this. I particularly wrote to the governor countless times on the legal system of security that will help in those states. Last week, people were kidnapped in those states. My family's members have been kidnapped four times under the university, second tenor. And you are telling me there is security in those states. I want him to understand that even the Red Roof Revolution that ultimately handed over to him, most of those buildings are bare off. If you go to primary schools, two puppies will be in the class, rain will be falling on them, snakes will be chasing them out of classes, and you are telling me that the educational system is okay. I also want to bring to his notice that today, a no source of power supply has been shut down if it's not aware. You cannot keep deceiving the people all the time and think the people will not revolt. If not for one thing, for another thing, understand that you were given a mandate and you are going to give account of this mandate. And no people know that this government is a fraud. 
And no people know that this government is not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, um, Umoro, Umoro, I, I, I'm going to cut you in there again because when you say, just a moment, just a moment, when you say Edo people know uh, this government is a fraud, that's a subjective statement. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, no, no, hold on. It's a, it's a subjective opinion that you just brought out to the public space. We don't have an aggregate of other views to substantiate that statement. Let us just quickly sir, anchor this one because I know we're going to have a part two. Just, 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 just hold on. Just hold on. Uh, hold on tomorrow. We're going to have we're going to have a part two of this discussion. But I'd like you to give me your final word on your expectations on the primaries. That's the major thing we're talking about today. Yeah. My final word is this. Yeah. Heavens will not fall. Men will not die. The primaries will hold as planned, and the delegates will vote. And I bet you, by the time you invite the same man on Monday, he will not even pick your calls. He will be licking his wounds by then. He will be looking for hands <laughs> to wipe his face. All right. If All right, Omoro. Uh, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Matter, mm. from that lesson I heard, you are going to lose massively. I All right. Bet All right. Uh, all right. Let's let's wait in that time. Let's not jump into conclusion. Uh, by some matter, quickly, uh, as we as we as we get a final word on your expectations on the uh, primaries. Yeah. Yeah. My expectations. I have said earlier that we are going to have our primaries on Saturday, and on the strength of yesterday's judgment, it is those delegates. This man talking will not be there because he does not even know who came to conduct their. Maybe we knew we need came to conduct their their primaries. And just to quickly correct two misinformation. The issue of the library, we have said this repeatedly. Even ITV has carried it repeatedly. And though people want the development, that library building was abandoned. That same premises will have a library. But because of the space, government is now, you know, we used to have Ministry of Agri there. Government is thinking of making good use of that space as we are done with the Secretariat building and all that facilities. So that, to that extent, Edo people have a better deal under our pass Okay. Right? Using government resources to attract private investment. It's not a shame that Benin City, the heartbeat of Nigeria, the state, the heartbeat of Nigeria, those state, the heartbeat of Nigeria, we don't have a shop right. In Abidjan, they have four. Don't you think that those people's lives will be better? Are we all educated people that use the library? Don't we have artisans? Don't we have market women? Would that place not benefit everybody? So that is what we talk when we say development. Okay. He also talked well, about the central of school. This is one government that feels we should decentralize the healthcare. Yeah. And the idea is to make good use of space. Stella Bass enjoys under serious construction, and the place will be ready next year. All right. You know, he's called wait and see. By the time he wakes up and realizes that the fight they are fighting will not be useful again, because the delegates that have come from this judgment, the adult delegates, together with the statutory delegates, will elect all the candidates, and they will all come as state lawmakers, federal lawmakers, after next year's election, to support this government. Okay. So okay. Together, okay. we can make a good All right, uh, um, uh, Umoro, I want to thank you very specially for your time with us. Uh, Umoro, uh, Bob Mano Umoro joined us from Lagos via Zoom, even though he's from Edo State. So uh, I'm hoping you will be here physically after the primary so we can have a uh, direct conversation with you. All right, thank I you. Want over, I want to hand over an award plan of Johnny to Bogart, to that man sitting there. Uh, well, uh, but Umoru, I told you a while ago, you have a way of being don't, very, don't very acidic with your expression. But, but that's okay. Let's let's be guided properly. But I thank you so thank much you for your for patience. Thank, thank you so much. for allowing this thing to be civil because thank you. we are not in the banana republic. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take a short break. Our TMI continues. Our breakfast month is coming up. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it.